so here i am with another garden update it feels so weird making this because it has been so long but maybe some of you know that i used to make garden updates back in the day and well i'm gonna do that again i'm gonna do that again so let's start with where i am living actually right now because the last time i realized that this wasn't finished right now i'm living in an old studio of mine, music studio of mine, that I completely transformed. I painted the walls and everything, the ceiling. I put a new um, kitchen table, however you want to call this, on it. I have a gas stove now. I have a fucking, I don't know, whatever, man. I have a whole kitchen, basically. And I have a fucking closet. I mean, basically everything is here. I even have a bathroom with a shower as well so this is where i'm living right there is my bed and i mean it is quite cold right now it's 12 degrees in here because this stove or whatever it is um i don't know how you call it but this this wooden um, wood stove i don't know this thing it's not connected so i don't have any warmth over here the only warmth that is coming here is from me sleeping basically and sometimes me cooking and it's also really fucking humid in here as you can see the windows are fucking foggy as hell and uh, yeah that's also something that i want to fix in this in this building but let's get back to the plants because that's where we are that that's where we left off, right? Let me show you a bit. So before I'm stepping outside, I have some tomatoes here that I don't really care about anyway, but yeah, well, they're rooting like crazy always. So I thought I might as well give it a try. This is the street tomato, a tomato that I once found on the street and I have saved cutting after cutting after cutting. So this is still the same street tomato, but just cuttings of cuttings of cuttings of cuttings. This is some, I think this is called the jade plant, but I'm not quite sure. It is said to increase, um, well not increase, but it's said to normalize or regulate the humidity temperatures, the humidity levels in the room. So this is partly the reason why I have it here. It's said to improve oxygen. If paired with the spider plant, which I have here, this is a well, spider plant makes babies and this is basically a baby that I potted up. And so if you, apparently if you compare these plants, you will improve your room air quality or something. So this is a mango, a fucking mango from a store. I don't know, probably, it's probably not poly embryonic, but it's mono embryonic, which means that it has only one embryo. When a mango has only one embryo, that means that it will not be through the seed. Only when it has multiple embryos, when it's poly embryonic, the mango can get through the seed. That means that the mango that you can get out of is edible. And there's actually a mango coming out. And this is a pineapple. I mean, the pineapple plant is actually fucking big. I think I'm going to think I'm gonna switch pots. I have bought some extra pots over there. I think I'm going to repot it. Because it's getting huge, man. This is from Costa Rica. I mean, there's no pineapple growing in there yet. But maybe it will be, it will be next year or something that this is going to grow. Here's some other indoors plants I don't really care about. So let's go outside, shall we? And show you how my autumn garden, my fall garden is looking. The beautiful sun. That's amazing. So I've changed a lot here. Let's see where I, where should I start actually. Um, well, let's start here. I have a couple of things here this is a herb it's a savory i think this is a mediterranean herb that's always you see in mediterranean mixes but actually not many people know about um yeah it's, it's great for with, to mix with rosemary or sage or whatever because it really fits well into those recipes some rosemary that's that's that this is some thyme that's growing really well some sage in here, some white pineapple 
uh, strawberry that I still need to put somewhere, but I don't know where. Because I know that my parents have strawberries as well. They always get eaten by snails and slugs. So I'm kind of afraid for that. But anyway, I have some time. There's no strawberries coming on there. Some more rosemary, some more thyme, some orange thyme. So this thyme smells like oranges, which is really great. I wish you could smell this, guys. I have some sunflowers that are quite late. I sowed them only in August or late August even. But they're still coming out, I think. These these are just sunflowers because I have planted sunflowers across this border, but they never came up because of the slugs. Now I have some pumpkins over here. I remember I was showing you about my tromoncinos, about this pumpkin variety. And these ones actually fell off the plant that is right here. I'm going to show you in a minute. These ones actually fell off before they broke off, as you can see. So I just left them here to dry a bit. And well, yeah, I'm not really worrying about them. But as you can see, guys, I haven't, I didn't sit still in the time that I wasn't making videos. This is some mint, some wild mint that my dad brought from England. He was on vacation, in England and Wales. And he brought this one and it's spreading like crazy. As you can see, this is all the mint. I think this is just going from the roots. It's coming from the roots and it's going up and spreading and I think it's rooting as well in here. So that's doing crazy. Anyways, my potato harvest was not that good. I must say my potatoes were shit. But right now there are some old potato plants that are, are coming up from the potatoes that I just left in there because my potato plants got eaten by the slugs guys so yeah as i predicted the slugs were quite a big problem this year but i have learned a few things which i'm going to show you as well that will prevent you from happening the same as what happened to me right so i'm going to show you that but first let's look at our harvest from the pumpkins by far the biggest fucking tromoncino is here man i mean it's fucking huge bro this thing is like crazy, like to, from the reference, this is my hand, bro, it's all the way to there. And it's, there's another one, but this one is basically the only one that hasn't broken off. So this one is definitely the biggest. I'm going to save the seeds from, for next year because this is an amazing variety, I swear. And right now it's a bit wet, but uh, yeah, this is the fucking thing that I made for them to climb on. But they haven't been as great like this this thing this structure has broken off a couple of times and i've uh, actually put some more sticks and fucking poles in there just for it to hold on because those pumpkins are fucking heavy man as you can see here as well i've had some whatever it is but yeah those are the pumpkins let's see what else do i have i have this plant this is called jiaogulan in china this, this comes from china and in certain regions in china they get really old and apparently it's said because this plant because of this plant basically because it is said that um well it will it has anti-cancer properties and it has well a bunch of other properties but will apparently are really healthy for you so Sometimes I make some tea with this. Right now, not a month, not that much because it's not really growing, so I can't really take a lot. But uh, yeah, it's had to be vigorous and really, well, really growing a lot. So I put it in a pot, but I mean, not that much actually. Some kale. This is apparently some red kale. The same as this one, which is kind of being eaten by snails, but it's surviving, I think. And this one as well. And this one, this one is really red, as you can see. I hope it's going to be like that color. Um, what else do we have? I have a peach here. It's just a peach seed that I bought from Etsy. Apparently, it's said to be like a blood peach or something. So that means that it is like red inside, red flesh, blood flesh, blood colored. This is a loquat. I don't know if you know what a loquat is, but loquas is basically... Um, yeah a japanese fruit i think or a chinese and it's, and it's called japanese mispo or something wait i can show you i had because i had it uh, from i was on a vacation in may 
with my dad to Spain. And then we brought this, this tree. I bought this tree and I put it in a pot, in a terracotta pot, as you know, I don't like plastic. And uh, yeah, basically there was one fruit hanging on there, or two fruits, and I saved the seed and that's one of those plants. This is the bigger one and it's actually producing flower heads, which is crazy because I don't know if these flowers are gonna survive. I thought that it would be hard in this climate where I live because it gets really cold. By the way, the sun is beautiful. But yeah, that's that. But let me show you some other pumpkins. I have some butternut squash, some more over there, over there. And I have some, oh, some other tomatino that is growing. But let me show you the secret of growing pumpkins in a sluggy climate. So the secret, it is right here, guys. The secret why I managed to grow pumpkins in a climate like this where there was literally slugs everywhere. Like if I were to lay my hand on here, there would be like four slugs under there. Like slugs were spreading around the area. And right now it's a bit less because it's fall. It's a bit colder, they don't like it as much. And it's not as wet as it used to be in the spring. But this one is the trick. It's just a copper pipe. And I made sure that I started the seed, the pumpkin seed indoors. And as soon as it grew about this size, I put the plant, um, I, pu I pulled the plant, the stick of the plant, the, the top of the plant, I pulled it through the pipe and then it just started to grow. And slugs, they don't like copper at all. So I've heard of people putting copper tape around it and a copper, I don't know, a copper wire, which I tried as well, but it's just too thin, you know, just a copper wire won't work. So I just have a, a copper pipe that I had left, that my dad had left, and the pumpkin started to you know, go through, and it is kind of too big maybe for the pipe, but I mean, I don't, I don't care, bro. Like, it's producing for sure, which is great. That's the trick. That's the trick that I managed to find, and oh, it's working like crazy. Even the sunflowers are in copper pipes, as you can see. So copper, that's the thing, copper. Now, I don't know what it will do to the plants. I think it's it's harmless, man. And uh, yeah, we'll see how the pumpkins taste. It don't, don't taste fucking coppery or something. But I don't think that's a problem at all. Uh, I haven't been sitting still. I have sown a lot of uh, flower seeds in this patch, in this area. Uh, these are supposed to ha need cold stratification, which is basically that they need a uh, amount of cold period so they need a bit of frost and after that they need warm weather to germinate which is why I have chosen to sow them right now because after the winter they will supposedly start to sprout and germinate so I hope next year there will be a lot of flowers I know I said that I will make this bed of flowers as well but it didn't work out guys I sewed them and nothing came up I think also because of the slugs. But um, these, these, these flowers I've sown here, they're partly also just flowers that slugs don't like. And so as you see guys, I really have taken a lot of measurements against these slugs because they have been devastating, you know? They have been devastating. But yeah, it's whatever, it's whatever. Now one last thing I want to show you guys. This is not the thing that I want to show you, but this is just an avocado tree that I brought from Costa Rica as well. Costa Rica. And, um, well, it died actually. But there's a new one growing. I don't know, I might, by the way, I also might um, build a greenhouse here against the wall. So just for tomatoes and extra stuff. Speaking about greenhouses, there's actually a fucking greenhouse in the garden. And I'm gonna talk to you about it inside. So I'm inside the greenhouse now. This is the greenhouse that my dad built. He built it completely himself and I mean, props to him man, it's looking crazy. It's just some old windows that he found on online from nearby. Most of them are or really cheap or even free. And well, it's made a fucking greenhouse. In the end it wasn't 
it wasn't really free at all because I had to make, you had to buy some things from the um, from the building center. I don't know how you call it. So you had to buy some things from the store, from the hardware store. So it wasn't really free at all. But I have, we have together, we have um, put some manure, some horse manure from our neighbor, which is great because she has a lot of horses, or a few horses, and she has a lot of manure because the horses, they have manure like crazy. And so we have put manure in here, which we're gonna cover because it is quite wet. We're gonna cover with or leaves or straw, just a dry material, brown compost that is called, because compost needs to exist out of brown compost and green compost. Green compost is basically the wet stuff. So things like this wet manure, or maybe even uh, things that you, f you will find in your kitchen scraps, these kind of things that are wet, that are more well, green, as you could call them, grass clippings are also green, and you need them to mix them with brown material, which is basically dried material. Things like dried leaves, things like wood chips, things like straw, things like that. You need to mix it in order for the compost to work best, in order for the compost to break down as quickly as possible. So because this is very wet, this manure is very wet, we need to lay something over here, so something like straw. We're gonna probably gonna put some straw and then we're gonna put some normal soil in order for it to break down, in order for it to be as most fertile as possible and not, well, not fucking manure still when we wanna put in some plants in here. We're gonna grow some tomatoes some peppers in here. And uh, well, yeah, this greenhouse of my dad inspired me to build my own. I wanna build my own because it is great, man. Like the way that he did it. I mean, props to him, bro, for sure. So yeah, that's that. So again, I haven't been sitting still. If we talk about the garden, I mean, it's always been a passion of mine. And I've always kept good care of the garden. I mean, I definitely learned a lot about these slugs because it is a shame that so many things didn't work in my garden. In the end, I managed to grow some pumpkins I managed to grow some kale in pots, uh, some other things in pots. And I have grown some peppers as well, which I will show you, but they didn't ripen yet. But yeah, the trick is just growing in pots, I guess. A lot of things in pots. If you can, plastic free. I don't like plastic, microplastics in the plants, in the soil and in your food. I don't like that. And it's not a sustainable way to live, not good for nature. So if you can in terracotta or in something other, some other natural material. And uh, yeah, so that's that's basically it. I have, as I said before, I've sown some, some flowers, some more flowers. I worked to get some manure from the neighbor, which this is the compost bin. This is, if you look well, this is just manure. Like under here, you still see some straw and some other, well, some other stuff that is not fully decomposed. But I'm hoping with this wet manure, it's gonna compose a bit more. I had like 14 wheelbarrows, wheelbarrows of compost of horse manure, and so I couldn't fit all those 14 in here. There were three wheelbarrows three of those were in the greenhouse of my dad and the rest I put here so it's like 11 and I put also here this is just pure horse manure which eventually I will mix with this one but this one now needs dry material so I'm gonna gather some old leaves which are falling off the tree right now a lot I'm gonna gather some of those put them on there and then put some more horse manure and repeat that a couple of times until all the horse manure is on there and then hopefully I had the, I will have the soil will be broken down on time for the new growing season. I mean, that's great. That's great. I definitely have learned a lot this growing season. Going into this, I thought everything would be perfect. I thought I would get some potatoes. I thought I would get some pumpkins. I thought that I would get some peppers and whatnot. But 
in the end, I didn't get much, to be honest. I mean, I had a few harvest of uh, my zucchini, which is uh, dead by now. And um, yeah, what else did I have? Well, I have those pumpkins, as I've shown you. I have eaten some of that, but and some raspberries. But to be honest, the potatoes didn't work out because the slugs eat the whole plants and oh, a lot more. But I'm glad that I could tell you this. I'm glad that I'm showing you this passion again, a passion of mine. I don't care what people think about it, you know? Because I, I know that this is my passion. I know that this is something that I want to pursue year after year. And well, I hope to have a great garden next year. Definitely. I will definitely improve. The question is how, you know? And there's one last thing that I want to show you guys. These guys. So. They're about four months old right now. And once they were cute little chicks. But there's some bad news, man. They're both fucking roosters. So this one is a little rooster. And this one is a little rooster. It's both silky chickens. And uh, well, yeah. We have to decide what we're gonna do with them. I mean, we put them online, but. Roosters are not really popular online. So, uh, yeah, I don't know, man, it's kind of hard. Like, I have slaughtered a rooster before. It was just an egg that, well, it was an egg that we bought on the side of the road. Sometimes they sell eggs on the side of the road here. Just an egg. We thought, well, fuck it, we'll put it under a chicken. But this, this rooster was so big, it was huge, man. So I did slaughter it. I mean, really didn't like doing it that much. But um, yeah, I did it anyway. I ate the meat, which was really great, by the way. It was the best meat I've ever tasted. But yeah, I don't, I don't really know if I want to do it again. I mean, I could, I could do it for sure. But with these chickens, it's another story because these ones are much smaller. They're silkies, which means that the meat is black. They don't have that much meat anyway. I mean, and they just look much cuter or something, man. Like those, the, the first one that I slaughtered was an aggressive rooster that was just way too big and had these ugly, <laughs> ugly legs. I remember it was just ugly overall, but this one is just cute, man. Got the little hair on top. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I could slaughter one again. I mean, unless you've slaughtered one, you don't know what you're talking about, right? I mean, a lot of people would say, yeah, just slaughter that bitch. But <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. You've never did it, right? I've, I've done it and I know it's hard. Especially if you've seen those chickens when they were just little, little baby chicks, you know, and you've saw them grow up. But yeah, <laughs> let's not get emotional about that. If you have any tips of what to do, let me know, man. Let me know. I mean, part of it is nature, you know. You can't have too many boys for the chicks. <laughs> yeah. And in here, the chicks are just hiding. There's another one in there. They are hiding. This is my favorite chicken. Just a cute, white little chicken. They are hiding because we have... <laughs> Three fucking roosters, two there, another one, the old one. And so, man, we have only like four or five female chicks and three fucking roosters. So this, the, the fucking measurements are not right. You just get raped and the feathers get picked off and that's not how why we want it, you know? But man, I love chickens. If there's two things in my life that I absolutely love, are one chickens and two pumpkins those are the things that i love and that's also mainly the reason i think why it's so hard for me to slaughter those chickens or anything right again if you've never done it you don't know what i'm talking about but it's hard that's all guys for today i'm going to show you some more in the future well i can show you real quick one last thing these are the peppers. It's one pepper at least. 
I put them indoors because I think it's too cold right now. Like in the night, it will be only five degrees. I don't know how much that is in Fahrenheit, but it's very close to freezing, I would say. Well, that's that. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.